So sometime in the past, I took a look at using the event list in depth to edit MIDI. There's a link to that in the description below. Today, however, we're going to be taking a look at the other means of editing MIDI in Logic, the piano roll. What's going on, voiceover warriors and keyboard ninjas? Welcome back to Logic.Band, a place full of tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you as a blind Logic voiceover and macOS user. Subscribe to the mailing list at logic.band and get a free getting started with Logic course. All right, so to get started with the piano roll, you first need to have some MIDI data on the track. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead and pull up the musical typing keyboard musical type. and record something here. Bars one beat one two. All right, so we got that recorded. So now I'm gonna put away the musical typing keyboard on command K. So now that we have the first region on the track, we can open up a piano roll and start editing. The way I like to use a piano roll is in its own window, and that is with command four. So command seven will open the event list, command four will open the piano roll. So I'm gonna do command four. Now in tab mouth, piano roll, piano roll, layout area. And we want the piano roll layout area. That's the area that shows us our notes. And this one is a pretty simple pass with three notes in it. So I'm going to interact with this layout area. In piano roll, noted eight bars, two beats, not noted five bars, one beat, 246 ticks. E2, layout item. Logic Pro has new window. So you see that's one note there. And if I view right. Noted eight bars, two beats, 19 ticks. B2, layout item. Noted eight bars, three beats, 158 ticks. A2, layout item. All right, so you see we have those three notes listed there. So I'm gonna go back to the first note. Note at, at five bars, one B, 246 ticks, E2, layout item. And I'm using VO left and right arrows to navigate through this, but you can actually do left and right arrows on its own. And when you do it that way, you'll actually hear the note sound. So if I hit the right arrow, so, and then if I do left, So you can navigate through all the notes in the region with just a left and right arrow. And if you have perfect pitch or you can recognize musical notes by pitch, you'll know what note you landed on and where it is in the sequence. Now, much like the event list and also from the track headers, you can transpose the pitch of the selected note with option up and down arrow. So if I do option up, that takes it up a semitone and option down will bring it back down by a semitone as well. Option shift up and down will take it up by an octave. So that's option shift up and option shift down brings it down an octave. And if I play now, Five bars one. you see that's a little too low. I'm gonna take this up and let's see what this sounds like. Five bars, one beat. That might work better. Let's go up. Five bars, one beat. So let's leave it there for now. Now, the next thing you may have noticed is that this note is coming in late. And the nice thing about being in the piano roll is you can actually just move the playhead to where you'd like that note to start. So I'm going to move this to Four bars, five bars, one beat, one tick. Make sure the playhead is at bar five. And if you remember, I have that first note selected. Uh, E note is selected. So now if I just hit the semicolon, I just moved that note to start exactly at bar five. So if I do VO left arrow, because there's no notes before it, so it's just gonna ding at me. Note at five bars, one beat, one tick. E3, layout item. Note at five bars. Now if I undo that, undo. I just press command Z to undo that. Note at five bars, one beat, 246 ticks. E3, layout item. You see this, note at five bars, one beat, 246 ticks. So you see that note is quite late. But because the playhead is at bar five, if I just hit the semicolon while I have that note selected, it moves it to the playhead. Note at five bars, one beat, one tick. E3, layout item. All right, so you see now that note is where it needs to be. All right, so I'm gonna move over to that second note. All right, so now I got that note selected. And if I wanna move the playhead to that note, I can do control Eight home. Eight bars, two beats, 19 ticks. And you see eight bars, two beats, 19 ticks, right? That note really should be right at eight bar, two beats. Eight bars, one beat, one tick. Eight bars, two beats, one tick. So I just did control, command, period, and comma to move the playhead around until I got it exactly at eight bar, two beats. I have this note selected. And I want it to start at eight bar, two beat. So I'm going to do command left bracket this time. And that sets the start point of the note to the playhead. 
Note at five bars, one beat. Note at eight bars, two beats, one tick. B2, layout item. You see it now starts at eight bars, two beats, one tick, instead of being eight bars, two beats, 19 tick. Now, the other thing that you can do, in addition to setting the start of the note that way with command left bracket, usually I'll do semicolon to move the note to the playhead, but you can set the start of the note to the playhead as well with command left bracket. But command right bracket will also allow me to set the end of the note. And this note, I need to be exactly uh, one beat long. So I want it to end at eight bars, three beats, right? So I'm gonna move the playhead to eight bars, three beats. Eight bars, three beats, one tick. And remember, I still have that second note selected. So now if I do command right bracket, that note will end exactly at eight bars, three beats. And now I'm gonna move over to that last note because I want that last note to also start at eight bars, three beats. So playhead's already there. I'm just gonna hit the semicolon. And now if I view right, Note at eight bars, three beats, one tick. A2, layout item. See that A note is now at eight bars, three beats, whereas if I undo, undo. that. Note at eight bars, three beats, 158 ticks. A2. You see that was at eight bars, three beat 158. So I'm going to hit the semicolon again since I haven't moved the playhead. And by the way, you don't have to VO left or right. If you're already on a note and you want to know what it is, you can just do VO F3. Note at eight bars, three beats, one tick. A2, layout item is in the voiceover cursor and it will tell you what note is there if you already have the voiceover cursor on that note. All right, so that's how you can set your start and end points of notes. So let's go back to the first one. Let's move Five the playhead back one to that first one. So I just did control home to move the playhead to the selected note. Five bars. All right, so let's take this down. Yeah, I like that up a little one higher. Beat, one tick. This B note. Let's see. Do we want this up as well? Let's play. Yeah, so I'm going to take that down. And let's take that down. So I just took the A down an octave as well. And that doesn't really work. Um, let's take that B back up. So there you go. You get an idea of how you can kind of mess around and move notes around. And you can also change it to any other note as well. So that's what you can do in here. The other thing you can do, you can adjust the velocity. But before I do that, just want to remind you to visit logic.band and sign up for the mailing list. If you have not done that already, you'll get a free getting started with logic course when you subscribe, along with me being able to notify you when there's new blog posts, new tutorial, and when there's an update to the logic keyboard ninja key commands list. Also donations help make weekly content possible. So if you'd like to show your support and give some value back, if you received any value from any of these tutorials, please visit logic.band slash support. There's even an option to subscribe so you can have a monthly subscription. That's a great way to show your support on an ongoing basis and return some of the value that you've received from these tutorials. All right, so let's get into it. You can adjust the velocity by stop interacting with the layout area. Out of piano roll, layout area. And VO left. Piano roll keyboard, scroll inspector, group. You have the inspector and in here. In inspect one slash 16 note, menu button, strength. One time quantize, classic. You can quantize. One slash 16, strength, swing. Scale quantize, off, menu button, velocity. And the velocity, so you can change the velocity in here. 98, velocity, so slider. you see that note is at a 98. I'm in slider. Take this up. 108, 108, 118, 127. All right, so take that slider. all the way up to 127. So you see that first note's louder. And let's say I want to adjust one of the other notes. If I tap the right arrow while I'm in here. 98. You see, I just selected the next note and you see that change to 98. So I can still go ahead and adjust the velocity in while I'm in here. 108, 118. And let's take that up to 118. And then we'll take the next 100, one 118, 100, 121, 122, 123. 123. All right, let's see how this sounds. All right, and you see moving to the notes with just the left and right arrows does not change where the playhead is, so the playhead remains where it is. All right, so that's a brief overview of the piano roll. I'm gonna close this with Command W. Now in, mouth, tracks, window, tracks, contents, group. And you see I'm back on my track. Track, 100, track 137, header classic here. electric piano. Thank you for checking out this tutorial. You can support us with a donation by visiting logic.band support. 
If you're interested in going deeper on any of these topics, book yourself some one-on-one -on -one training by visiting logic.band slash training. You can find both these links plus a link to a blog post with some supplemental information for this tutorial in the description below. And as always, until next time, happy recording.